So I want to share this dream that I had early this morning. So this is November 21st of 2019. And I'm sharing this because I want this to be a video of encouragement to never forget who you are in Christ Jesus and your identity. Don't lose that no matter what happens to you. So anyways, in the dream, Juanita Bynum was the guest speaker at, I guess it was a church conference that was going on. And she was the guest speaker and she began to flow into the prophetic. And I'm not too far from the stage. I'm like down, like maybe three or four steps down uh, from her. But it was like bleacher steps is is weird. But she was on the stage and I had a sense of knowing in my spirit that when she started, began to flow into the prophetic that she was going to call me up there. So sure enough, when she saw me, she said, come up here. She says that to me. But for some reason, I had a hard time going up the bleacher step to get to her. So anyways, um, I needed some help and she saw that I needed some help and she helped me up there. I don't know why it was hard for me to go up there. I can't explain that for the life of me, but um, anyways, I get up there. Now, here's what happens that is strange to me because it's like I'm on the stage, but I had the outer body. It was like Jesus body. But. I was in his body and I'm trying to explain this to the best of my ability. It was like she called me up on the stage, but as soon as I got on the stage, I looked like Jesus. But I obviously I'm not Jesus. I was just in him. But for some reason, his body was on the outside of me and he looked exactly like you know how when Jesus was before the people and the king was asking the crowd you know is this your king and the clothes that he had on I had well he had on the same sackcloth clothes the crown that was kind of tilted on his head and of course we all know how he looked in that moment um, when he was before the people and they were judging him or whatever. That's what his appearance was when I got on the stage. Like I said, she called me on the stage. But as soon as I got on the stage, all you saw was Jesus. And um, as soon as I got on the stage, Juanita Bynum pointed to Jesus. And she asked the crowd, is this your king? And of course, the crowd is laughing and they're ridiculing what they saw. Um, it, you know how the crowd did when Jesus was before them. They just wanted him crucified. They wanted him dead. They didn't know who he was. They didn't believe who he was. And so it was like I was there in his body experiencing what that felt like in that moment and when I was before the crowd even though on the outside it looks like Jesus but I'm on the inside I'm crying but mind you this is I believe that this was Jesus experience and his mind frame and his mindset when he was going through what he was going through when he was before the people before he got crucified and in my mind, I heard Jesus, he was crying as he was before the people. But the reason why he was crying, it wasn't for the reason of because all oh, these people are laughing at me. These people don't believe me. These people don't, you know, understand who I am. He wasn't crying because they was talking about him or they were being mean or nasty or rude towards him he was crying because he knew that they didn't know or could see or recognize his worth and who he really was but he knew in his mind he knew that he was royalty 
He knew his worth. He knew who he belonged to. He knew that he was a king, but it was just he was crying for the people because they couldn't recognize that he was a king or they didn't know who he really was. That's why he was crying. But in that same token, he also knew this is a place. This is I have to walk in humility. This is about humility. He knew that he had to walk in humility, even though he knew and was full of where he knew who he was. It didn't deter him when he heard all of the ridicule and people laughing at him. It did not deter him from knowing who he really was. He knew he was a king. He knew he was God's son, but he was weeping for the people that they couldn't recognize that and that they didn't know. He was sorry for them. He, w- he wasn't crying because he was hurt or he was embarrassed or he was ashamed that they were seeing him in his most humble moment or seeing him walk in humility and showing humility. That's not why he was crying. And I felt like um, I was given this experience to know and understand. And it was like I was partaking in what it was like to to be ridiculed or humiliated or to have to walk in humility but still being resilient in that moment of humility knowing who you are and keeping that intact and not letting it deter me from truth and who I am and why I came It was like God wanted me to have that experience so that I I'll know what to do when we go through the same things that Jesus went through. That's why when you really belong to Christ and you really belong to God and you are truly anointed, people are not going to like you. And people are going to do hurtful things to you. That's why, you know, we partake in. His suffering, too, because in all actuality, when he was there carrying his cross, believe it or not, we were there in him. So this is why sometimes we get hurt. This is why sometimes we get lied on. This is why sometimes people are nasty or rude to us for no apparent reason without a cause. Now, if they did that to our master, what do you think is going to happen to us? And he is the king. He is the truth. So if they did that to him, what do you think that they're going to do to us? So if we get persecuted, we ought to we ought to take that as an honor that hey, you're you're you have something against me because of who I belong to. That is an honor to suffer for him. That lets me further know that I really belong to Christ. So I want to encourage you guys No matter what happens now, nothing can hurt you worse than church hurt. But you know a person by their fruits. And whatever fruits they're producing, that's how you'll know whether or not they are they truly belong to God. Or if they they don't. So when something happens that cuts us and hurts us, do not forget who we are in Christ Jesus. He said that we're the head and not the tail. He says that we're above and never beneath. He says we're a royal priesthood. He says this. He says we are blessed and highly favored. So no matter how bad people treat us or what they do to us to try to cut us, we have to remember who we are in Christ Jesus and not let that deter us from truth. So I just want to encourage you guys, um, just know that if, if you you serve in Christ and you're following God, you're going to suffer a little bit. You're going to suffer. You tr- If you truly belong to him, you are going to suffer. If you are truly anointed, you're going to partake in his sufferings. You are. There's no way around that. But sometimes what happens when we get hurt, Especially by the church, you would think of all people, 
I know my fellow brother and my fellow sister. They're going to embrace me. They're going to be kind to me because they have the right spirit. But that's not always the, the case. They're the ones that really know how to cut you and cut you deep and hard and are very mean. So you have to know what to do, even if it is a brother or sister in Christ. You, you have to learn how to walk in humility and walk in love and still walk in the f- fruits of the spirit. And not act out of character because you hurt. Oh, I'm hurt. You hurt me. So I'm just going to shut down. I'm not going to go to church no more. I'm not going to follow Christ anymore. I'm not going to read my Bible anymore because they hurt me. So that deterred me from truth. Or, oh, my brother and sister cut me. So I'm going to cut them. An eye for an eye. A tooth for a tooth. That That's not so. We are to be an example of how Christ was. He walked in humility, even though he knew he was faultless and he knew his worth and he knew he had no error or no wrong in him. He walked in humility. And that's my example. And I think that's why God wanted me to experience this dream or why he showed this to me. To understand that if we truly belong to him, this is what's going to happen to us too. But to be encouraged because even though that happened to Jesus, he overcame the world. And so can we because we have Christ Jesus on the inside of us. We have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. And we have God the Father hand on us. And we belong to him. So think it not strange if you are suffering. Think it not strange if people don't like you. Think it not strange if you're not in the in crowd. Think it not strange if people think that you're different, weird, or whatever they want to say or whatever they want to call it. Count it all joy and think it not strange. Just keep your head held high, be encouraged, and just know that Jesus, your Savior, overcame the world, and so can you because he lives on the inside of you. So I was just honored and blessed to go through that. I, I, it was a bit confusing to me, the dream, but all that means is that we just have to remember who we are and we have to know our worth in him and remember what he says about us, not what the world says about us. Not the words that they're spewing out about us. We have to remember who he says we are and walk in humility. I think that's why I had that dream. And I'm I'm so blessed and honored that he gave me that experience. And I just wanted to share it with you guys. I hope that you are blessed and I hope you guys are doing great. And just let this encourage you and take it on and just remember that you can overcome no matter what comes your way count it all joy it is an honor and a privilege to suffer back behind following righteousness because our reward is not going to be from man it's going to be from god and that's the greatest award that we're we should be seeking to achieve or to have one day all right so You guys be blessed and thank you guys for listening and watching. Bye-bye.